Dear, dear liberal friends, you have elected me as uh, the liberal president and I am genuinely humbled. I thank you with my full heart. I am actually quite moved here today and I will work hard to repay your trust. It is not every day you can imagine that an Andorran is elected to represent over 120 political parties and an international organization that reaches the world. I believe this fact alone, that you have entrusted the leadership of Liberal International to a former foreign minister from a small European state like you, you did decades ago to a former prime minister of Luxembourg, shows how we liberals practice what we preach. We are true internationalists, mindful, respectful of nations that large, as large and small. We value the, the power of the individual, of human beings equal in rights, free to develop their potential. We are also at Liberal International a family, sometimes with differences of opinion, but a true family, a real team, to quote uh, yesterday's opening words by Hans von Balen, that assembles to celebrate our heritage since 1947, but also to work on the future. This is what I would like to talk about, the future. Francis Fukuyama, two decades ago, pronounced the end of history, and liberal values victorious over communist regimes and despotic polities. It might have seemed so back then, it does not look like that from today's perspective, and especially, I would say, from this liberal podium. Democracy, human rights, freedom of the press, freedom of conscience and religion, freedom to assemble and to speak your mind, are not fruits hanging low from trees. Human beings have had to conquer them with sweat and blood, persuasion and ideas, books and revolutions, and once achieved, Permanence is not guaranteed. Ask the people of Venezuela today who may have sort of an electoral democracy, but whose freedoms in between elections are curtailed in the most appalling ways. Ask the journalists of South American countries who cannot write what they want for fear of retaliation. Ask gays and lesbians in Russia, just to name one country, who cannot exercise their freedom of speech without the possibility of being arrested or who risk being sent to jail or sentenced to death in scores of other countries around the world. Ask the participants in many movements resulting from the Arab Spring if their aspirations have been met. Ask peoples in Asia if economic prosperity should preclude political freedoms. Ask politicians in many parts of the world who risk life and limb just because they dare to raise their voice and be counted in their opposition towards entrenched regimes. No, 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 my dear liberal friends. Democracy and respect for human rights are not part of a package that we receive at birth out of the blue given by Merlin the magician. They are something we need to work on every day against erosion from populism, from fear of the other, from flawed but all-encompassing ideologies, and in the end, from closed minds, closed borders, closed cultures, and I would say closed hearts. The future, dear colleagues, is in our hands, and I would dare to say in our liberal hands. We have been entrusted with ideas that find their origin in the 19th century, in the 18th century, fight against obscurantism. Ideas that were the object of much reflection in the 19th and 20th centuries by the likes of Adam Smith, Alexis de Tocqueville, John Stuart Mill, Isaiah Berlin, and many, many others. Ideas that we have adopted in our foundational Oxford Manifesto and all documents approved by Liberal International in the past seven decades. But we are not only about ideas, we are about action. We are a pulsing, strong organization with a spine made of steel look, dear friends, at our competitors. The socialists lost in an ideological limbo and with a membership that does not seem to know where their core values lie anymore. The conservatives clinging to a world oblivious of globalization and paralyzed by populist encroachment on the right. 
on their right. We are the only international that is active at the United Nations, the only one, where we do not fear to confront head-on injustice and authoritarianism. We are the only international where debate is robust and where we are not afraid to ask difficult questions to those parties who want to join us. We are the only political international that has freedom at its core, civil and political freedom, economic freedom. In this, our quest for freedom in the next few years, I want our liberal international to play a major role. We can only do so if we look at the task ahead as a team. And that means that I do not see the Bureau, obviously, as a socialist presidium or a conservative hierarchy. The Bureau is a group of equals, respected leaders in their respective countries and political parties who have to roll their sleeves. Like Prime Minister Rutte reminded us last night, to work, work, work in achieving our goals. I see the joys and burdens of the LI presidency as a shared responsibility. We are with our fellow members of the Bureau. For the first time, we have a deputy president from outside of Europe, Helen Zille, whom I visited, as I told you before, in Cape Town and invited to run. Kishore Faulkner, Cecilia Wilstrom, Marcus Lunning, Zevedet Chakarov, Kazit Piromia, Robert Woodrow Brown, and Shi Chung Liu are a diverse, diverse, hardworking group of liberals that I trust and cherish for the years ahead. I'm very happy with the Bureau we have. Of course, we will still have in the Bureau Hans van Ballen as honorary president, and I will ask. <laughs> we will have Hans van Ballen, but we will also have our new Prize for Freedom, John Aldo Dice. All their energy will be valued and used. Now, Ally is not only the Bureau. It is its membership, and more must be done, I believe, in, to bring uh, into our daily work those parties, those members who wish to be involved, those political leaders who hold ministerial, parliamentary, and other responsibilities, and who can make our common voice heard where it is needed, in all halls from the European Commission to Mercosur, etc., etc. I have also worked with the ALI Secretariat for many years now. I have to say, it is impressive how much Emil Kirias, the Secretary General, and his small but compact team, Tamara Dancheva, Robert Winfraken, William Tausen, and lately Anne Sullivan, and of course Antonella Fabiani, can do with the available resources. I bid thank, a big, big thank you to all of them. <laughs> Richard Moore, ladies and gentlemen, our patron, put it very elegantly the day before yesterday. He told us that my country was the size of the Athenian democracy at the time of Pericles. <laughs> that sounded very nice. And I do thank you, Richard. Well, you might, you might not know about Andorra is that it is one of the most ancient democracies in Europe. We have been electing our political representatives regularly since the creation of the Andorran parliament in 1419. That is almost six centuries of democratic life. Another interesting fact, my ancestors have lived in peace since 1278. No wars in our territory for over 700 years. The luck of the draw and geographic isolation for sure. Andorans are not better than other peoples. But also a commitment to a liberal philosophy of freedom from early on. An Andorran political book of the 18th century that was obligatory reading for all Andorran parliamentarians, the Manual de Gest of the Valleys of Andorra, of the neutral valleys of Andorra, enjoins our elected officials to be careful with too many rules and regulations. It is not by chance, dear friends, that I am a committed liberal since my youthful days. To be a good internationalist, as we all are, does not mean to renounce one's roots, but to find in them what brings us closer to our fellow human beings. I am very grateful today. I said it before, but I want to reiterate it to my party, the Partido Liberal d'Andorra, who has supported me for many years in my work at Liberal International. 
And I want to thank each and every one of the 12 party members who are here today and that I recognized before, representing the old and new guard of the party, and also, of course, my family. What I do want to do, what do I want to do, you might say, during my mandate as president? Well, let me tell you where my priorities lie. I want to reinforce our work on human rights. I have seen it grow and prosper from our first participation in the meetings of the UN in New York to the gatherings of the LA parliamentarians in Geneva a few months ago. We have a voice through ECOSOC. Let it be heard in full and let's work all together in defining our objectives and let's push our messages of freedom together. LI in Geneva and New York and your respective parliaments and governments, wherever their voice reaches. Undemocratic countries are unhappy. China, Cuba don't like us. Tough for them. It means our voice matters. Let's play rugby hands with this, as you used to say. I also want to facilitate during these coming years, a moment of introspection for LI. As we continue to grow in all continents, and this morning we saw how much this is true with the many and uh, important parties that join our organization, let us remind ourselves of our liberal principles. Let's find an academic setting to talk about what we share. John Alderdice has just created a substantial institute at Oxford University. These and other venues can offer us the possibility to assemble not just to talk about parties and elections, but about principles and common standards. Let's have a continued dialogue on what it means in politics and in economics to be a liberal in the 21st century. I also want to continue our work on the ground, both where elections are disputed to help our member parties and where freedom is at risk. Sometimes, they might throw us out of a country or put us in jail. So be it. Je veux aussi assurer à tous nos amis francophones de mon engagement pour l'Afrique. Vous m'avez soutenu nombreux depuis ma première élection au bureau de l'international libéral et je vous en remercie. Aujourd'hui, vous apportez à notre organisation une vision importante du monde en développement, comme on l'a entendu hier au sujet du libre commerce. También a todos los representantes de los partidos iberoamericanos mi compromiso de trabajar con y por vosotros para que la democracia no desaparezca del continente latinoamericano y para que se oiga más vuestra voz en la internacional liberal. Two other presidents of Liberal International came from the Iberian Peninsula, Salvador de Madariaga and Adolfo Suárez. I will try in my, in my own way, of course, as a politician and an academic to build upon the foundations they left. In January, I attended the General Assembly of the International Federation of Liberal Youth in Krakow. They elected a new leadership. I am ready to work with them and bring to our wide membership what they have to say. Also, the International Network of Liberal Women has labored for years in our midst. I had the privilege, when I was ambassador to the UN, to be their sponsor for observer membership in ECOSOC. I have since then been a close friend and I, continued, I will continue to be. Parties, political parties, dear friends, are in the business of winning elections. I was a month and a half ago in Canada at the Montreal Congress of the Liberal Party of Canada, where the polls are great for our Canadian colleagues and Justin Trudeau. We must be proactive in helping our colleagues in different nations with their electoral processes, through the sharing of skills like many of our foundations do the British and the Swedish, just to name a few, and also through our contact with parties running for election. The Secretariat of LI must be one of the bridges between those who need help and those who can give it. And electoral situations change. Those who give help today might be happy to receive it tomorrow. Let's share more experiences between our parties. Let LI facilitate this exchange. I like that this Congress is in the Netherlands where liberalism is vibrant among, of course, our host, the VVD, Hans and their dynamic Prime Minister, Mark Rutte, but also among the D66, a party that is leading polls and pushing ahead. My first trip as president will be to Geneva in June to defend our principles 
at the UN with liberal parliamentarians. After that, Brussels, in my own continent, to meet with liberal leaders in government and remind them that they cannot be liberal when dealing with Europe and protectionist when they are dealing with the rest of the world. And soon, <laughs> and soon Latin America, with FNF and their active delegations, North and South, who have helped us a lot in the past years. Asia and Africa in the fall. I am now no stranger, as those who know me, to planes and very little sleep. I want to be among you, the membership, as much as I can. Now, our congresses are not only social gatherings. They are moments in time in which we stop our busy lives to celebrate our liberal achievements, share them, and prepare ideas and agendas together. This Congress has been a huge success. I thank Hans, I thank John, I thank the VVD, I thank all of you, and long live Liberal International. Thank you very much. Thank you.